All right, guys, I'm getting ready to do a little bit of maintenance on the uh, front of the Kodiak here, not on the actual Kodiak, but one of the accessories that I mounted. So some of you guys might remember last year, it was last summer, I want to say around July, August, I put this trailer tray on the front of the Kodiak here. It is a complete bolt-on unit. It comes with all the brackets, these tubes, everything, and it's a modular type piece, so it's made to mount on the front of any type of travel trailer like you see. So it's adjustable with different bolt hole locations, the front brace right here, all right? The main reason why I had bought this and mounted was to haul the Honda generator on the front. I got the generator right after that and I, I got a video showing that. This works excellent to hold that Honda generator. I made one mistake whenever I mounted that up here and I've got to do a little bit of repair to this thing now to get it back in uh, proper uh, usable condition. So let me show you what happened. I actually drilled this hole right there. Let me get you in there where you can see it. I drilled this hole in there because I was using this for a, a cable system, a cable lock system. All right, so these holes are already there. These are made so that you can, you know, hook a bungee cord or a ratchet strap or anything to that to hold your cargo up on here. So I drilled this hole here and I drilled that hole right there and actually had a cable lock going through there holding the generator on. So we're probably going to go a little different route this time. I'm still working on that. In fact, they make a uh, lockdown plate that bolts to this, bolts to the bottom of the generator, and then mounts that you know sits in here. I've actually uh, went to try to buy that a couple of times, and I, I guess they're out of stock right now. Maybe because of the COVID thing, everything being backlogged, uh, the people that sell those don't have them in stock. But anyway. What we're gonna do is fix this, okay? So I'm gonna actually weld this back up. We're gonna grind that crack out, just TIG weld this up. And then what I'm gonna do, I've got a piece of angle iron that we're gonna mount to this. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna weld it or just bolt it on or what. So we'll put a piece of angle iron across the back right here. It'll go all the way across and that'll stiffen up this area right here in the middle where I, where I weakened it. You can see that crack started working its way on down. And this happened uh, fairly, quick because I noticed it whenever we had whenever we were in Wichita with my buddy Andrew is when I noticed that the generator was shaking around a little bit more than it should have so I started inspecting found out that that thing was cracked right there so it started weakening it I mean you can see you can see it moving it'll still work but you know that's unsafe to let it continue to crack so we're going to fix it so we're going to get this thing unbolted all it is is, is uh, it's got a set screw it's got a through bolt on each side same thing on this side. I've already taken that set screw out right there. And then we've got to loosen up this uh, center support here, unbolt that, and then this is just going to come off. I'm going to take it in the shop and uh, work on it in there. All right, we got all the bolts loose from here and the center support. It should just yep, start coming up just like that. Of course, I'll have to use both hands. That's it right there. It'll just lift right off at this point. We're going to go right into the shop with it. There we have it off. I'm just showing you guys this so people can see how this thing mounts up. I'm actually going to take this guy off right here and slot these two holes in the middle of the machine because I didn't have the proper amount of adjustment up here. And I had this, I had this piece tweaked a little bit. It wasn't perfectly straight. So I need a little bit more fine adjustment out of this. So I'm going to, I'm going to mill some slots in this guy right here. So I have a little bit better adjustment on that once we bolt it back on there.
just test fitting the angle iron to it using the clamps. It has a slight bow to it, so we're going to use the clamps to pull it down nice and square and flat against the actual tray. And I'm going to take them off here and show you what, what I ended up doing. These were punched by a dimple die, so, it, so like the bottom of it's raised up. So in order to get these clamps or the angle iron to be able to sit down flat the way I want it to, I actually had to grind the bottom of those dimples off there. So just use a grinder clean those up and like I said there's just a slight amount of bow to it like that from it just getting warped you know over the past year so I'm going to go ahead and put four holes in the angle iron because I do use these holes for strapping things down we're just not going to put the one in the middle anymore so the ones out here on the outer end will be just fine so I'm just going to clamp that on there like that I'm going to reach through there with a sharpie and mark the holes and go to the uh, milling machine and just drill those four holes out and then we'll clamp it down like this i'm going to finish dressing that paint off here and then we're going to clean the mill scale off of this real well and then we'll go we'll go through the bottom here and we'll just put some stitch welds across the bottom and that'll hold this fine and also across the back side here we'll put some stitches across the top there as well There's the holes drilled. We got it all deburred real well so there was no sharp edges. Went ahead and dressed all the mill scale off the areas that we're going to be welding. And it should mount up nicely. <clears throat> Put our vice grips on there and it should square everything up good. Pull it up nice. Looks like all of our holes are lining up perfectly. Oh yeah, that looks good. They all lined up nice. I'm gonna put some a few more clamps across here got these cant twists that we will uh, use to kind of just pull the you know the shelf and the new angle iron against each other nice and tight I think I'm gonna go get a couple more of these put a couple more get everything pulled in real good there and then we'll start getting it stitched on there
Okay, we got the welding finished up now. I think it turned out pretty good. Got our stitches on that side. It stiffened it up really nice. And then flip it over here. And we've got it sewed up on this side as well. So that's about it for this guy right there on our repair. Just got to get it mounted back on. But as I said, that, that other bracket that mounts to this right here, I need to get it, do some slotting like it is here. But I need to slot the other bracket so I can get that and make sure that it's leveled up right whenever we go to bolt it back on there. So all I'm going to do for here is I'm going to use some, um, the uh, CRC rust converter and paint on here where it's bare metal. And I'm going to get some rattle bomb paint and just give this thing another just a cheap paint job you can see where it's already trying to fade anyway so I will uh, clean it up scuff it and give it a paint job we got the Honda generator inside I wanted to go ahead and set it on the tray here and do a couple modifications maybe try to improve the way that I mounted it over uh, over last year but one of the things that I'm doing is replacing the rubber feet that's on the bottom of it and I'll flip this up and show you this is one of the rubber feet right here. It is a very soft rubber and it's designed to, uh, you know, give a little bit of flex and allow this thing to kind of move around and absorb the vibration whenever this is running. It creates just a very soft foot. I wanted to go ahead and replace these because the way that I mount this thing down here with the bars is that it squishes this rubber, okay? I'm remaking them. This is one of them right here. I've already made two of them, just kind of testing this out. And I think this is gonna work fine. I don't recall what grade of plastic or rubber this is, but it has a very, uh, very soft durometer to it. I remember this was, uh, this was used years ago in our shop to make some parts for somebody, but it has a very, it's very soft and it squishes, not as much as this rubber right here, but it does have a lot of give to it. And I think that these will work better. So let me flip this up. I got it where I can just lean this right on back. All right and it'll sit right there. Nope, let me fix it. All right, there we go. So here's the one I've already mounted in place right here. All right, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty tough to machine this stuff to get a really good finish. So you can see the tool marks in it, but I really don't care how they turned out. So turn the OD, we counterboard the ID. I used, I used the same six, miller, six millimeter bolt to hold that in there, but that just shows you the difference between the two right there. I just made mine a little bit bigger. All right, you can see how that flex is there. So it just didn't work that well trying to, you know, bolt this down to the tray. It worked, but it still was a little bit loose. So I think that these feet right here, see, I can squeeze it and move it just like that. So it's gonna be a little bit more stiff and I think it's gonna work a little bit better for the way that I mount this thing down. I made these, uh, this is some stainless steel flat bar that I had in the shop two different thicknesses, but it didn't really matter. And all I do is just slip these guys through here. And I got some holes drilled in here and that secures it down to the tray right there where it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so I'm gonna continue working on these other feet, these little mounting pads here and get two more machined and get them replaced there. And uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like once we're finished up.
I set it back up and face this side out because it leaves that nub right there. We'll just get a clean face. But that's the uh, process right there to make one of those. Nothing elegant, pretty, or anything, but it's the size, shape, and it'll work. All right, we got all, all four of our feet finished up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them on there. I'll show you. It uh, can't be easier, just a bolt that holds these guys on there. So the one thing that I am going to have to do, I do need some longer bolts. I don't have any of this size. This is a six millimeter bolt. So I'm going to see if uh, the hardware store has got what I need, but we're going to go ahead and put them on there just so that I can finish out my testing and tuning going on right here. It's got enough thread to where I can screw it on there. Maybe I'm lying to you because that one's not going on there now. I don't want to face any more off of it or counterboard any deeper than it is because I want that amount of material right there. So these are just going to go on there temporarily just so I can finish doing what I'm doing here. I can finish fitting this up, make sure everything's gonna work there. There we go. All right, given just a little wiggle test right here, I can still see some, this is a little bit low because it's not supported with the bracket right. I got a jack underneath there just to try to help support it. But I can still see the rubber feet squishing like the other rubber, but not like the other one did. So it's gonna provide some vibration dampening and work just fine. I'm, I'm real happy with that. So that'll allow me to put my other mounting bars through here and pull this down a little bit snugger without squishing this thing completely and having you know sort of loose bolts in there so i think i think these are going to work fine there's another shot of the whole thing i can't remember if i if i showed it in this video yet or not but you know the eu 3000 is from honda i got this from northern tool that's uh, one of the places that sells it around here it works really well for our, for our needs. Our Kodiak travel trailer has one air conditioner and it runs that unit just fine. I already did a, a test on it a couple of times last year, left it running for several hours with the AC running and it did great. You will not be able to run this or use this for, a, for an RV that's running two air conditioners. You're gonna have to go up to, I think they suggest at least 5,000 watts if you're gonna be uh, if you can be running two ACs. But for our unit, it does good. So a couple of reasons why I invested in this unit is, uh, you know, we're here in Hurricane Central, right? And it seems like we're getting more and more storms every year. And I wanted to have this, since we keep our Kodiak parked right here next to the house, I wanted to be able to have this. If we lose power because of a hurricane or a tropical storm or any kind of incidents where we lose power, because it does happen sometimes, and it's hot, muggy, we can take this out of the garage, fire it up, and uh, run the Kodiak, and you know, we can sleep comfortably in that if we, uh, if we need to, if we need to weather out some uh, power outages. And then, of course, the other reason is, like I mentioned, I want to have this thing, I like having it mounted permanently on the front of the uh, camper whenever we're gone on our long trips, and have this ready just in case we need it. If we're going somewhere that does not have power, because you know, there's, there's gonna be times where a campground is the same thing as a city. Maybe they lose power for whatever reason because a storm comes through, knocks out some power lines. We'll be able to you know, have this and run our, um, our camper, keep the battery charged and run the AC and be able to sleep comfortably. Or what I would like to do at some point is find one of those campgrounds that is, uh, you know, that don't have any connections that's kind of off the highway, maybe next to a river somewhere. Uh, a place designed for RV camp and not out there amongst the people that like to tent camp, but uh, an RV camp and be able to have this to uh, run our AC or keep our battery charged, whatever we need. So it's an investment that I made uh, for this, you know, lifestyle that we like to live with our, uh, with our camper and have it as a backup here in case of, 
uh, storm coming through. So this, is, uh, this makes me a lot more happy with the way that the feet are mounting on it now. So that is good to go. The only thing I need to do is take that bracket that I mentioned before that goes right here. I need to bring it in here and slot it so that we have more adjustability when I get this thing mounted up that I can come up and support the center of that uh, shelf properly. I do run a cover on this all the time. That's actually the cover right there for it, and it works great. It just uh, it fits around tight, goes all the way to the bottom, and then when, when we're uh, traveling, I have two bungee cords that I run over it just to secure it, make sure it doesn't try to blow off. So I always keep it covered. That's why it still looks brand new. Try to take care of this because it was an expensive investment. This is that L bracket that I told you we gotta, we're gonna slide it. So we got a 3 8 10 mil in there and I'll take both these holes and uh, slide it both ways. So that was the last bit of machining there. We got the two slots milled, so that will allow me, that goes, this bolts up right there on the bottom side. And this will allow me a little bit of movement up and down so that I can get this part of the tray bolted in nice and level there. Before it was kind of pulling it down because I couldn't get this thing up just a little bit further. I've also uh, relocated the, I've got a cable lock system on this right there. And we've got that, I've been playing with that, tweaking it and getting it set up in there the way I want. And we actually have the lock itself is underneath the, uh, the generator there, which is you know bolted down. So all this is, is a deterrent. It is not gonna you know, keep someone from uh, being a thief if they want to be a thief on this, but they're really going to have to go through some effort to figure out how to, uh, you know, remove it from the tray and then have to uh, cut that cable there as well. So I think with all that there, I'm pretty safe, but all it does, any kind of lock system, all it does is keep an honest person honest. That's all it is. If somebody wants to steal something from you, they're going to figure out a way to do it. But I have high hopes that we're not going to have any problems with this. Um, this is always going to be, you know, we're when it's in the campground, you really don't have a whole lot to, to worry about. I mean, I know anything can happen, but generally speaking, most campgrounds, RV parks are pretty safe places to be. And all the ones we're, we've been to, we really don't have to worry about somebody taking our things. It's never been an issue when you're at a campground. And then, you know, when we're on the road, kind of parked somewhere, we're generally just parked temporarily because maybe we're at a gas station or rest stop or something like that. So we're usually nearby the truck and the, uh, the camper too, uh, just to kind of keep an eye on things. But anyway, that's really all I got to say about that. I know people are gonna suggest you should do this, you should do that. I really wanted that lockdown plate that somebody builds for this guy because it bolts to the bottom of the generator, bolts to the tray, and then it has a uh, sort of hidden lock system on it, but I tried to find one and nobody had any in stock So we're just gonna roll with what we're doing right here. Here's what it looks like with the cover on it Also, I grabbed the gas can and brought it in so you can see how it fits perfectly right there next to it So this cover is just a cheap inexpensive cover that I found off of uh, Amazon designed to fit the Honda and they have some other ones there as well whoever makes this but in fact, I, when I was putting this on, I noticed that it does have a couple of little pinholes up here, probably from when the bungee cord was riding on it for, you know, 7,000 miles. I'm probably going to go ahead and order another one. I think they were around 20 bucks or so, maybe even less than that. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this. This is a very uh, inexpensive investment to help keep the thing covered. Keeps the sun, the UV rays off of it from weathering it. Keeps the rain off of it. And it also hides a little bit, so you don't know exactly what it is. Okay, but there's the uh, gas can. All I do is I got a couple of run, uh, rubber bungee cords that I use and hook to these holes here and go across it in an X pattern. 
and it holds it there just fine. So this is fuel that I have on board for the generator if I need it. Uh, also for the Honda Monkey as well. This is the, uh, the extra fuel. I actually have it completely drained and empty because uh, probably about a month ago, I still had a little bit of old fuel in there, just a little bit. So I just went ahead and ran it completely out of fuel. You how quiet that thing is, man. until it, it shut itself off and leave it just like that. I'm not gonna run it and I'm not gonna put any fuel in it until I know that I'm gonna need it. I'll have some, uh, you know, some fresh fuel right there and I'll have it ready for uh, whenever we decide to use it. All right, guys, we've got our repairs finished up on the trailer tray and we've got it mounted back on the front of the Kodiak and it is good to go. It is ready to be put to work there. I went ahead and uh, gave it a, a uh, fresh rattle bomb paint job on it so it's just to uh, protect it, you know, and cover the bare metal back here where we had uh, welded the angle on. So it is ready to go. Uh, I've got some set screws ordered to go into these holes right here. You have, a, you have a, a bolt that goes in that works as a set screw on both sides, including down at the bottom there. And you can see it's right here. So I'm gonna take those bolts out. We've got some stainless steel set screws that's gonna go in there. And, um, and replace those bolts. So that should be showing up today. I've also got some more hardware ordered for the bolt down. We've got some stainless bolts that's gonna be holding the generator on. I went ahead and uh, tweaked this. This lined up better. Had to put a little bit of a bend in that bracket right there just to get everything to uh, line up like it's supposed to. So it's working pretty good. It, it looks good. The uh, fresh paint looks good. And now it's not sagging. So it's got plenty of strength. I believe this thing was rated for 500 pounds, but you know, you can see it. Now, if you hit it to the side, little, it's got a little bit of lateral shake there to it. But uh, overall, this thing is just sitting here riding. It doesn't matter how fast you're going or whatnot. This is the softest place on the RV, you know, whenever you're pulling it. So it rides real good. And I'm just happy that we have that crack fixed and we got plenty of support back there to support it there. It's gonna work out real good. I do have a new, uh, the propane tank cover. This one is a couple years old and I'm surprised at just how uh, cheap it, it was. It did not last very long. So we've got a new cover order. It should be here today, I believe. A little bit more heavy duty than that. This one I've already replaced. This just protects the plastic for the uh, electric jack there. Keeps the UV rays off the plastic and the rain off of it. So we are, we are ready to go. And this uh, mounting the generator up here on this is one reason why I wanted to go ahead and build the, um, I'm trying, to, trying to remember what it's called now, the, uh, the hitch crane that goes in the back of the, the trailer hitch of the, uh, the truck. I wanted to build a hitch crane so that I can back the truck up right here to in front of the Kodiak, pull the, uh, the generator out here and be able to safely and easily pick it up and set it there on that tray. I'm trying to get to that project. I really have had other things going on and I don't know if I'm gonna have that completed before we uh, go to mount this up to leave for our big trip later on this year. But I'm certainly gonna to try to get it done. But if not, I'll just have a buddy come by here and help me and we'll pick it up and get it mounted up on the tray. So there we go. This, this repair project is now finally complete.